Last time we had a walkthrough on how to develop a general arrangement drawing for a given set of one story um, residential structure. So this was the general arrangement for the ground floor. So today we are going to be looking at how we can develop uh, the GA for the first floor. So in case you are just joining us, I will leave a link in the description to where you can access um, the tutorial on how to develop this ground floor. And also I will leave a link to where you can download this same architectural drawing so you can as well practice with the same drawing. So let's kick start the tutorial too for this series. If you are with us the last time, um, you will know that firstly I like to study my architectural drawing and studying the architectural drawing the last time, we came to an understanding that um, there is an increment in size when we move from this ground floor to the first floor, there is an increment of 600 both on the right and the left hand side. So that is going to be reflected on this first floor GA. Are familiar with architectural drawing, you will agree with me that uh, the room arrangement we have on the ground floor is not always the same thing we have on the first floor, or if it's to be um, more than a story building, it might not be the same thing that we have on the second, third, fourth, or whichever the case may be. So the question is when we encounter drawings like that, how do we get to sort out um, those challenges? How do we get to sort out those changes? when moving from the preceding floor to the succeeding floor. So we are going to handle that right in this tutorial. External changes are always easy to spot out, but what are always difficult is internal changes. If there are changes here, how do we sort those challenges out? So that is also one thing we are going to be handling in this very tutorial. What I want to introduce to us is a concept we call superimposition. Now, superimposition, what it does for us is that uh, we overlay our uh, preceding floor on our succeeding floor. So with that, uh, we are going to be able to detect where there are changes in both, uh, uh, where there are both external or internal changes on the structure. So what I'm going to do right now is I will make a copy of this first floor plan to this point. And I'll also make, um, this was our GA that was developed the last time. Let me close down all the lines. And I'll also make a different copy of this for some reasons. I will change the color of this um, ground floor GA. I will change everything here. And I'll make all the colors of here to be green. Or I can choose blue or go with blue. Now I'm going with this blue color because when I overlay my ground floor plan on my first floor plan, I want to see the differences. I do not want this color to interfere with the colors I have here. The colors of these walls are white. That is why I'm putting everything here on a blue color. So what I will do is I will copy this drawing using a different kind of copy. I will copy with a base point. Let me go to clipboard. There's an option with copy with base point here. I'll copy with the base point and I will choose the intersection of grid line 5 and grid line C as my base point. So where grid line 5 intercepts grid line C is what I'm using as my base point which is the same thing as this point right here. Remember 5 and C. So I will come down here and I will paste, go back to clipboard, then I will paste it as a block. So I will look for the position where grid line C intercepts with grid line 5, which is exactly this position and, and paste this here. So I've successfully overlaid my ground floor on my first floor. So anywhere you see this blue line, you will know that uh, these are my ground floor and anywhere you see the white lines, you will know that those are my first floor. So now looking at the plan, let us observe the side plan right here. We we'll work with one side because if you remember, this is a twin drawing. So whatever difference or whatever changes we make on this side is the same thing that will be reflected on this other side since it is a twin drawing. So if you observe, you will see that uh, we still have our wall lines at this point. So that means the wall lines here is not going to change. We can actually run a beam through this point. And uh, also our wall lines here are the same. Our wall lines to this point are still the same. Our wall lines here are still the same. Our wall lines to this point are, this, are still the same. And also to this point are still the same. But the changes here is that there is an increment of 600. So let's get this dimension. As you can see, 
this is the 600 increments which we saw at uh, this point which we saw at this point so what that tells us is that uh, we do not really have internal changes in this structure the internal changes here are the same we only have an increment at this point we can actually maintain all these column positions here all the column positions here and all the beam positions at this point but we'll have to make changes to um this part right here you have to make changes to this side so that it can accept our first floor layout so now that we have observed these changes what i will i can go ahead and delete this i don't need it anymore i've already overlaid my structure let me move this to this point then i would like to divide my screen i'll come to view and viewport configuration i'll make i'll use this two vertical so i'll be having a look at this plan why i'm working on the first floor layer now like i said the internal changes the internal walls and everything are the same just an increment at this edge so instead of me to start afresh positioning uh, my columns on this drawing and uh, my columns and beams on this drawing what i will do is i will make a copy of this since they are the same except for the increment to this point and i will now reflect whatever changes was added here on this drawing so from the out to out of this wall is 600 so what i will do is i will copy this including the grid line in between so i will copy this three right here to a distance of 600 to the left so these are our now our newly introduced external walls or these are our external walls that was introduced on the first floor right so for me to have this i will extend let me extend these lines So I've successfully created what we have on this ground floor to so this um I am please right here. Let me make a copy of this grid and I will call this grid one uh, So at the end of this video also I'm going to tell us what we use um the ground floor plan for what we we'll use the first floor plan for and what we we'll use the roof floor plan for because we are also going to uh, create a general arrangement for the roof the roof floor that's for the roof beams actually so moving from the ground floor to the first floor these columns are going to terminate at this point that means this is not going to continue from the first floor right the columns will terminate under our ground floor at this point right here so these are the columns that are supporting from the ground floor so when they get to this point they are going to terminate that means you are going to create another column at this edge for able to carry this our first floor structure so i will go back to my autocad and i will create a copy of this to this point so these are now our newly introduced column and i will delete this i'll delete the hatch in this and i will take this column from the column layer let me take it to layer zero and i'll give it a blue color i'll also make the thickness to be 300 so why i'm doing this is that this is actually telling us that this is our columns that will be tabulated on getting to the first floor so i will create the same thing here Delete this. And I will match their properties from this to this to this. And finally, let's come to an understanding first of all that <clears throat> whatsoever we create on our general arrangement is what. The builder on site is going to replicate so if we leave these wall lines here we're actually telling the builder to create a beam at this point i do not need a beam at this point i just want my slab here 
I only need this beam to cantilever from this point to accept this column that is coming here, which is what we did here. Which is what we did here. I do not need a beam covering this edge. I want my slab free flowing like this. So what I'm going to do is I need only this beam coming from this one right here. Let me put this side by side. So these are my columns from the ground floor, which are terminating, which are these ones. And this is the one that is continuous. And this is the beam that is connecting from this one, which is connecting from this one right here to this point. So I'm going to leave that, but I do not want a beam at this edge. I only want a slab covering here. So I'm going to take out this second line. So they can see that there is no beam here. It's only a slab at this point. So I will do that for here as well. So I'm just going to delete this line. So I will have my beam coming here, my beam coming to this point, and my beam coming to this point to receive my columns. And this, like I said earlier, this other one, uh, this internal beams is already created. So that is how to create our ground floor, our first floor plan, right? These are our newly introduced beam to carry this. Now, do not mind the size of this. Uh, this is actually a 150 wall, but we are going to use a 150 beam, right, on site for construction. So what I will do is I will just move this up to here. So that they can understand that this is actually a 225 beam. And I think that is uh, actually okay. <clears throat> so what I will do is I will mirror whatsoever I have here that I've created at this point. Down to this point. And I will extend my beams to cover up then i'll delete my hatch here so that the does not recognize it as a column rather it will recognize it as a, a terminating column so i'm going to match these properties of this to this and to this to this as well Then I'll move my wall lines up. So we have successfully created our first floor general arrangement. Now we did not do much work on this because uh, the configuration of this, of the ground floor and the first floor are likely the same so if there were to be internal changes let's say there were these wall lines we are to come from here we need, had newly introduced wall lines at this point we had newly introduced rooms at points like this then of course we are going to look at that and look for a better way to run our beams and better ways to position our columns so the next thing i'm going to do now is next thing i'm going to do right now is to create a general arrangement for the roof so to create a general arrangement for the roof i'm going to copy this but oh, we did not copy this column this is a grid rather so i'll make a copy of this grid to this point the center of this and i'll call this so next in line is our roof so this is now our First floor GA. So, next thing is a uh, I'll create a copy of this for our roof. Now, let's go back to our model and look at our roof, right? You'll see that what we have, we do not have these internal beams at this point anymore. There are no internal beams here. What we'll have is only these external beams. So we are going to take out all these columns because they've already stopped at this level. They've already stopped at this level. 
all these columns have stuff at this level so there's no need to continue or to let uh there's no need to tell the um So there is no need for us to indicate that there is a terminating column at this point. So on the roof, I'm going to take out all of this. And I'm also going to take out these beams right here, the beams right here because they are not um, going to show here, rather they are going to show at this edge so what I will do is I will move this line to this point I will move this to this point so with this we have been able to produce our um, this is going to be our roof GA so as simple as that that's how we uh that's how we can produce uh, a simple set of ground floor first floor and our roof ga for a given set of architectural drawing so next this is actually a sim very simple architectural drawing so next we are going to be looking at a very complex architectural drawing and how we can deduce our general arrangement for that set of architectural drawing as well so thank you for following up to this point and do not forget to subscribe to my channel for more updates thank you okay.